Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Yes She Can Project. I am so delighted to be joined by the gorgeous Lucy. Hello Lucy. Thank you so much for having me, it's a pleasure to be on. Oh thank you for coming on, I really appreciate it. Um, so for anybody who doesn't know you, could you just give us a brief introduction into who you are and what you do please? I'm Lucy Kane, I am a singer. Um, an artist, a songwriter. I feel like that's where people would know me from. I did The Voice in 2017 and that's kind of, yeah, that's that's what I do. I'm a singer. Brilliant. Um, so Lucy, you come from a really showbiz background and a really showbiz family. What's your earliest memory um, that you can recall from knowing that you were in that industry, if that makes sense? I think this is always a weird one to answer because uh, it was always normal that was yeah. how I grew up so there was never like a real point where I was like oh my god this is my life that just was <laughs> my life so I think the 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 major times it would stand out is we were like lucky enough when we were kids we'd always get invited to the premieres for like the new Disney films and oh, wow. all things like that so that was always really exciting and I think they were the kind of moments that that you'd you'd kind of realize that this isn't not everybody gets the opportunity yeah. to do these really cool things and I mean my parents are the most down-to-earth people that you could ever meet so our household life didn't feel like it was any different from that of any of my friends but yeah a few times we got the opportunity to take some of our friends to these things and that was wow. always lovely. that was always a really lovely thing for us and to be able to do for them and yeah I, I think that's that's the only time it was kind of apparent that yeah like, this is a really cool thing and we're really lucky to be able oh wow I bet you've got some stories to share for sure <laughs> I don't know I just it's weird it's a weird one I remember um it was oh, I can't even remember what the film was called but Alex Pettifer was in it who ended up in Magic Mike and it, I had an ice cream I was literally a child and I remember he licked the ice cream as he walked past that's one of my memories of being at a weird premiere <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <That's how>. yeah. <laughs> that's so random cool. isn't it Very random. but he was in magic mike so i can always say you know alex better licked my ice cream <laughs> <laughs> claim to fame there you go <laughs> um so obviously you're a singer lucy um can you remember any particular moment for you when you knew instantly that that was your calling again I've always sung and my dad has an amazing voice and there was always music in the house yeah and I remember being in primary school and always being told to stop singing like can you be uh -huh. quiet it wasn't chatting it was singing <laughs> and I'd be having conversations with my friends and they'd be telling me something and I'd be humming and it would be completely unconscious it was just <laughs> part of my every day and I was about six or seven and Charlotte's Web was just about to come out and oh. there was someone that worked with a charity and to be honest I was so young I don't exactly know how it all mm -hmm. came out but my dad had written this song called Make a Wish and um, an American artist that he'd always idolised called Bob Carlyle wrote one of his favourite songs called Butterfly Kisses um, oh. kind of wanted to, to sort of be on the song um, and I was singing the kind of main part of it wow. and that was that was recorded my uncle was a was a music engineer and mm -hmm. so we recorded it at his studio with Bob Carlisle my dad was there a song he'd written it was just an amazing amazing day and it got on the soundtrack of Charlotte's Web the the, wow. the version of it that was the film at the time and I think that was just such an amazing moment and I remember I was offered a kind of recording deal as a child and turned it oh down at the time because I don't know I was I was always I've been 40 since I was six oh. um, so I was like I want to have a childhood I don't want to like have that much responsibility now and I think that was the best decision that I could have made but it was always from then a complete that is what I want to do and it was always what do you want to be when you grow up I want to be a singer so the fact that I'm a working singer and that is my job I literally fulfilled my childhood dream it's amazing Especially as well, though, I bet that was, did you find it a difficult decision to say no to the recording contract? At the time, it, that was just the, that was just what I wanted to do. I've always been quite headstrong and that like, once I've made a decision, I kind of, that's me. I don't yeah. kind of question it too much. I mean, I do it before I make it, but once I've made it, you know, once you've made the decision, whether you've made oh, it. Oh, right it feels, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I, I loved my teenage years and my childhood and I loved all of that time and had that been any different I wouldn't be where I am now so it was yeah absolutely oh, I love that that's brilliant 
Um, so you touched upon um, that you were on The Voice. Um, mm. Could you talk us a bit about kind of behind the scenes, how it came about, how you decided to go on and what the process was like? So I was always that person who was like, I never want to be on one of those talent shows. Like, that's <laughs> not how I want to get into the industry. And I had been, it's a really kind of weird, long, convoluted story, but somebody on Instagram had come across my singing videos that I'd been posting yeah. and said, oh, let me put you in touch with my manager. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of working with a man um, called Dean for a while, and he was putting me into sessions. And he'd got me a session with an amazing producer songwriter called Steve Anderson, who does loads of the Kylie Minogue stuff. And oh. I still worked it with him to this day. I was 18 at the time. Mm -hmm. um, Steve is one of those magical people that once you're in his circle, he will just protect you at all costs. Oh, and do what is best for you. He is amazing. And he, I was in a session with him, a, a writing session, and someone in the building was a scout for The Voice. And at that point, I was kind of very early stages, but I'd been writing and nothing was really happening with the stuff that I was doing. It was just, that's just how, what I was trying to do. And once the opportunity is placed in front of you and it's like, you're being scouted, you're not applying yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think if you're talented enough here, you can skip a few rounds if you come. Yeah. It was really hard to say no. And I was like, yeah. what have I actually got to lose? All that I'm gonna get. The, the, the scariest thing was the thought of being not turned for. Oh and God, yes. thankfully for my sanity <laughs> and my own self-esteem, I was turned for, thank God. So, <laughs> I'd like asked for a non-disclosure, like, can, can it not be shown if I do go to her? And they were like, absolutely, oh, wow. do that. Um, mm -hmm. but she was like, I appreciate you asking, don't ask, don't get, but I didn't get. Um, but yeah, so thankfully I got turned, but it was the most terrifying thing I've ever done in my life and probably will yeah. ever do. The, the pressure of that moment is so insane. You're standing there in silence for a good 30 seconds, or at least it oh, feels that God. long before the music even starts. Oh, and you God. know there's these people that you absolutely idolize mm -hmm. behind a chair like it was it was so terrifying I watched that audition back and I makes me feel sick I really oh. struggled to watch it and I sang I didn't even sound like me like that is probably one of the worst vocal performances no, I've ever the, had. the nerves <laughs> the nerves it, it did something to my throat that it's never done before and hasn't <laughs> thankfully ever done since um and they'd let me get the whole way through the song and all the bits that I thought were impressive enough to maybe impress them yeah. hadn't worked so far. And I had this one note left and I was like, I'm just going to absolutely give it everything I have <laughs> left in my tank. If my voice cracks, it cries, I'm just going to go for it. So I had my eyes closed. The poor band were like, you were supposed to come off this note four weeks ago. Why are you still there? <laughs> <laughs> and the noise of the buzzer didn't happen in the studio. That boof. I didn't hear yeah. that either. It doesn't happen in the studio or I was so in tune with what I was doing and not listening to anything else that I didn't hear it. So I opened my eyes once this note was finished and Tom Jones was looking at me. And I oh. just couldn't believe it. I was so relieved I burst into tears. Okay. Couldn't finish the song. And then because I think I was so openly emotional, Gavin was like, well, she obviously really wants this. So he turned mm -hmm. as well. So I had a choice and it was just, it was an amazing, amazing experience. And I can't fault the experience that I had on The Voice, the team that looked after us as the artists. Mm -hmm. I just felt so safe. I could speak to anybody if I needed help. They had... Good literal psychiatrists on the set if you wow. needed to and like I felt I know others have had different experiences but for me it was really wonderful and yeah I had an amazing time and it and it did kind of set me on the path that I'm on now brilliant I bet it's oh god I can't even imagine it was like a roller coaster for you then so worrying that no one was going to turn they waited till the end and then you didn't hear the buzzer god it's getting me stressed <laughs> no it was it was so stressful I cannot there is no experience in my life before or since that has made me as nervous as that did it was it was oh crazy gosh. and then how long like because you see obviously the people turn and then they get like invited into um, the teams how long is the process until you go live again for like the battles and things like that so the battles and the um turning the blinds are filmed pre-recorded so that they're not live yeah. so it's that was filmed in the October okay. the battles were at the end of November I went out in the battles 
But I then, when the process was actually beginning to go out on TV, when the programme was going out on TV, I think it was in the January or February, I already knew that I wasn't through, but I had to go and do all this promo. Like, oh, I'm really excited for the battles tonight. It was Hi. really, really <laughs> bizarre. But it was kind of nice that you were armed with the information because you could look like you kind of didn't mind either way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no floods of tears. Come across sure that way. I don't know. Oh, for me you. the most important bit was getting a turn and I got that mm -hmm. and that was all I really cared about so nothing else really mattered after that yeah so like you say um you obviously good things came out of that uh, what was the best thing to come out of that experience the best thing to come out of that experience was me kind of discovering that I can write songs myself wow so uh, from that, I was signed to a small label. I was sent over to Sweden loads to Stockholm to write with some amazing writers and producers. And I created this amazing catalog of 30, 40 songs. Wow. And unfortunately that relationship all broke down. One of those classic music industry stories mm -hmm. all went a bit wrong. And now my music has kind of just been sat there. But I honed a skill, I, again, I didn't know I had. And mm -hmm. that has led me into I'm, you know, I into kind of writing for other artists and that's something that I'm focusing more on now. And I think, oh. I don't know whether I would cope too well with the judgment and the kind of, I don't know, that the, the eyes yes. on you, you were really successful as an artist. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing I always struggled with as a, when it came to writing, they were all like, what is Lucy Kane's sound? And I was like, I don't know, because I want to write a country song today and I want to write a really pop song tomorrow and I want to write a rocky song next day. There was no, I couldn't find something that I loved more than something else, I think, because I had such an eclectic music, like, yeah, I was growing up. So actually, it kind of makes more sense to me because I don't have to pigeonhole myself. I can just yeah. write what I want to write and it will be right for someone else. It doesn't have to be mm -hmm. for me. And it takes the pressure off a little bit in a way. Yeah. And I think that would be difficult, wouldn't it? If, if like you say, you you were in the public eye as a solo artist, then you, you maybe wouldn't enjoy it as much if you just had to go down one genre of songs. Yeah, and I think that is something with the music industry is they do, you do get put into your lane yeah. and that's your lane. And sometimes when people branch out, it doesn't do much for their career. It kind of flops mm -hmm. sometimes. And and that's a real shame because, you know, you're always evolving as an artist and as a musician and a writer. That's that's how life is. You grow up. And yeah. the songs that I wrote when I came out of The Voice, I was, what, 20, 21? I probably wouldn't sing those now. And so I'm happy okay. to pass them on to, to other artists. My sound would have evolved yeah. So, yeah it's just a nicer way and also you're not constantly having to think what do I want to say what these words are coming out yeah. of my mouth they have to mean something for me mm -hmm. it's there's kind of less pressure in that sense when you're writing for other people yeah. and especially say if because you, you obviously some of the major artists they have to sing the same songs over and over and over again and I bet the passion starts to wane if you're not feeling that particular way or on the other hand, you could have written something deeply personal that makes you feel upset every time you sing it. Yeah. And I mean, I've seen so many videos of these artists that have written a, like a, a horrible song about their breakup, like a really sad song, and it makes them cry on stage because it does take you back to that yeah. place at that time. And as, as cathartic as it can be, it's also not always nice to have to go back to that. So I do yeah. think that is another thing that artists have to deal with. Like, I don't know how. Yeah, you can, I can write that down and someone else will sing it and I don't it doesn't have to be part of my life yeah. all the time that memory of that story you know mm -hmm. one example I can think of as soon as you said that off the top of my head is um from Little Mix when Perry and Zane split up and then every time she sang that song she just cried and it was yeah. just so sad to see and you do as a singer you have to channel your emotion into what you're singing because no one you can be the best vocalist in the world but if you don't put emotion into what you're doing it doesn't have the same impact and yeah you can tell if you're not there or you're not tuned mm -hmm. in or you're not channeling and I just yeah I think it, that, that must be really hard it doesn't translate does it you can always yeah. see even in a recording studio if you're not feeling the song your vocal just sounds disconnected it's not mm -hmm. it's not the same Wow. Um, so from, from a personal point of view, Lucy, I've always wondered, because you and your family are in the public eye, how stressful is that? Do you, do you find like 
pressure in a sense of because you're because you're a model as well as well as a singer songwriter do you ever suffer with lack of confidence because the spotlight is on you does that make sense I mean to an extent I mean the spotlight is probably on my mum and my dad but not so much on me I don't get a hell of a lot of it but I do I think everyone has their insecurities don't they and if I do if I do go somewhere with mum I'm always genuinely a little bit more conscious of of how I look I think I don't know uh, it's a weird one when I mean through the pandemic and stuff and uh, there were some horrible tweets when my parents were ill which was obviously a bizarre thing oh. to have to deal with yeah and that was a, a strange experience because I had my mum was literally in hospital and I had journalists messaging me asking for me to talk about it I hadn't even spoken to my mum she was that ill oh. so that so is there is an intrusion to yeah. a point but we're dealing with it on a much smaller scale than than some people are. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. I think there is to a point a pressure. I mean, with modeling, I, it's something I dip in and out of it. It's not something that's like a huge major, major your, part of my yeah. career. Um, but it's something I do if the right thing pops up or if someone wants mm -hmm. me for it. And I don't know. I think mum's always kind of instilled in us that to just be proud of who you are. And I think I am proud of who I am as a person. And that's kind yeah. of really what matters in life and the relationship yeah. you have around you. So I think there's, yeah, there's obviously going to be pressure, but there's pressure for everyone, I think. Yeah. It's about having that support system because it because it, there is so many horrible people in the world, isn't there? And I think as much as the pandemic brought, you know, us all closer together and there was a sense of community and we were, we were all in it together at the start, I feel it definitely kind of I think I think it really flipped on its head. And and people just came out and were being really mean for no reason. Yeah. I just don't get that. There's a really weird culture, isn't there, of of everyone jumping on someone before they've even had a chance to defend yeah. themselves. And it's and I get it to a point. Like there's some things that are inexcusable, but I mean, uh, my brother and I, we were quite lucky. I feel like I was kind of one of the last generation that grew up without a phone until I was yes. in my teens. Mm -hmm. So I think for for me, I've always kind of been able to disconnect. And if someone, I, know, I had someone once comment and were like, "You've got such a long face. You literally look like a horse." And it, it genuinely makes me laugh. Like, it's actually funny that someone's taken time out of their day to, like, just don't Say follow me. crap about you. <laughs> you think I look like a horse. Horses are beautiful, so thank you. I'm confident. <laughs> but, like, I don't know. I think I think because it it's not been my whole life, it's just social media for me and kind of my family is a lot more towards our career rather than a personal thing. There's not a hell of a lot of my personal stuff on my social media. So if someone comments on it, it's not the end of the world. And that social media world isn't my be all and end all yeah. but I think for people that are a bit younger and for young girls that have had a phone in their hands since they were six or seven and they're already looking at their parents posting selfies all the time and it's I don't know it's a, I can't imagine growing up with that added pressure of yeah. constantly feeling like you need to post something I was, yeah. I was so grateful that I didn't have that yeah definitely me too and constantly feeling like you had to look a certain way as well or because I <laughs> like when we obviously when we were younger it was kind of like people could only contact you if it was like those, those old like Nokia brick phones or they could they would yeah. ring you on the landline but like now it's like cause I was really bullied at school but I when I got home I was really safe and that was my yeah. safe place but with kids today it's like they that they're never away from it because they can still be got to and that's that must be it must be horrible for them really horrible and I think your frat as a young girl I know I was very shy I had really bad acne I hadn't grown oh. into my face I was I as a like the sort of between the age of about 12 and 15 mm -hmm. I just was a, in a really awkward phase and it just wasn't working for me and I didn't feel oh. very confident at all so imagine then having the I mean phones were around but it wasn't the same as it is now right. um right. And so I just, yeah, I can't imagine feeling like I had to look a certain way. I mean, you look at pictures of like kind of me and sort of you when when we were 12 compared to kids now when they're 12. I mean, they've got like, like, they the look about 19, don't they? <laughs> I don't know when my era was like foundation lips and spider eyelashes like, it wasn't a good look zigzag partings literally yeah crimps crimp hair. Yeah. Like, I don't know. those little cool. things that you used to clip in your hair as well the little gems Cat's cradle yeah yeah oh my god yeah I know it's a flashback 
It's a throwback. <laughs> So you've recently returned, is it, from a stint in Panto? Yes. And I've, I've been following your journey, like, during your time when you were doing Panto. And, oh, my God, it looked so fun. <laughs> what, so what is, like, the best thing about doing Panto? Panto is, like, the, the best thing about this year's Panto was that I got to do it with Mum. I've only done oh. one other Panto with Mum before. And mm -hmm. being away at Christmas sometimes is a little bit lonely and it can be a bit rubbish because you're away yeah. from your family at the festive season and all you see over social media is people going Together. to Winter Wonderland mm -hmm. and you're like, oh my God, I've literally got no time to see my people. Um, <laughs> so being with Mum was just lovely because, I mean, she's literally my best friend. We are so close anyway, but because of life, you're busy and you don't always see each other. Yeah. Wearing we were living together we were there for six weeks we were in the same dressing room we were literally on wow. time all the time and it was absolutely lovely to spend that much time with her and that much quality time and you do you end up in a little bubble because everybody's in the same position everyone's away from home and we kind of we had we had a wonderful cast this year we made really really good lifelong friends I think and it's just such a fun experience and we were so lucky that you know we managed to do all of the shows that we didn't get any cancelled and it's, it was just a really fun time and it was lovely this year especially to see faces looking back at you in an audience and because we've been without that for so long and some of these children that are in the audience literally were born and are now watching theatre for the first time however many years later during a pandemic so I don't know it was just a really it felt really special this year it was absolutely lovely. It almost sounds like like you say you were like in a bubble it's almost like uh, you know when you see on I'm a celebrity get me out of here they all kind of because they're together all the time and away from their families they form like such lifelong friendships it's almost yeah. like that but without all the bugs and the rubbish <laughs> yeah. Thank God without the bugs. um yeah I, yeah I wouldn't want the bugs or the snakes but um <laughs> no, the people were absolutely lovely it's like that I mean you're in a rehearsal room for eight hours for two weeks and then you're in the theater all day every day with these people sometimes oh. three shows a day so you're never away from them and you know you've got six weeks of that much concentrated time you do make close bonds is it is it hard though having to do three shows a day I bet it's exhausting it's absolutely knackering <laughs> <laughs> and it's really, I, my opening song this year was I want to dance with somebody by Whitney Houston and I was sometimes singing that at 10 o'clock in the morning <laughs> I'm not I'm not a morning person and my voice is certainly not a morning voice but you just, you do find ways of getting through it. And I think you get each other through it because you do have fun on stage and you can't not have fun because it's so silly. It's you, sometimes you look at yourself and you're like, this is my job. What am I doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> But it's really good fun. And it, the the fun moments get you through the really exhausted, tired moments. Like stood there going, I really don't want to dance with somebody. I want to go to bed. <laughs> I want to go back to my bed this morning. I'm not <laughs> to you all, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if you could choose from um, each arm of your career, so your modelling, your singer songwriting, doing panto, things like that, is there any avenue that you would maybe lean towards more than the other? A hundred percent music, without a doubt. <laughs> I mean, that has always been the core, and you know, panto is really good fun. And mm -hmm. but I'm, I would never call myself, you know, I'm not an actress. So I can do a bit of acting in panto, but that's about it. Okay. Um, with modelling, I think it's a really fickle career path. I think it's one of those things. I'm probably too old to be signed now. I'm 25. Too old. <laughs> oh my god! People get signed at like 14, 15. It's a really oh bizarre gosh. world. And I mean, I was the the face of Vax vacuums in the Argos catalogues for a good oh, few wow. years. So <laughs> I know I did some cool things. I was, I was that was a really cool job. Like I know it sounds weird, but that was really good fun. I had a picture in Vogue once, which was really amazing wow. and like a real milestone. But I don't think I think it's just too superficial for me. Some of it's not, but just it's not my path. Music has always been exactly where I want to be, and. I've been lucky enough in the last sort of month or so to have been offered a um, publishing deal. So I'm basically being signed as a songwriter. So writing songs for other people will be my job. And that is just a dream come true. I couldn't wish for anything more than that. So that's seeing awesome. your face, that that's what brings you joy. It really does. It brings so much joy. And I just, the creativity and collaborating with other people and can't mm -hmm. wait to get back into the real room sessions because I've done yes. so many writing sessions over Zoom and I can't wait to like hug people and like yeah. feel the energy in a room again. But 
yeah writing songs and just being able to it's a really amazing thing to go in a studio with nothing and come out at the end of the day, end of the day with a beautiful song it's just wow. a really lovely feeling and mm-hmm. I would love to have the privilege of doing that for the rest of my life yeah gosh so when when people say songwriting it makes me think like you're like the writer of the song but do you get input as well into like that I'm gonna make out that I know what I'm talking about like the melodies and things yeah, like that absolutely. Oh, okay yeah so quite often a a session a general session you would go into a studio there'd be a producer and maybe you and another writer and so it's kind of the producer deals with making the music on the computer which is something I don't think I'll ever be able to do I can play the piano so I can work out some chords but ask me to make a drum beat on a keyboard and I wouldn't know I wouldn't have a clue where to start but yeah so quite often it's kind of someone will play a sort of melody or maybe have a line and you just collaborate all together and and you come up with the melodies together you come up with the lyrics together and sometimes people are just lyricists and sometimes people are just top liners with the melody but um yeah I kind of do a little bit of both I think and it's it's just really it's a really lovely creative wonderful process when you're working with like-minded people as well I can imagine like going in there with like almost like a blank sheet and coming out with with something incredible I bet that's so so brilliant it's really cool with publishing deals as well which you get sent pitches so you get sent kind of what certain artists are looking for for their album or for their next singles or whatever so you kind of can sometimes write to a brief and I've got Mm -hmm. quite even though I'm very I feel like I'm quite a creative person I've got quite a logical brain so if someone tells me a checklist of things I need to get off I love a list I will tick that (laughs) off and it's really nice to write with direction as well because otherwise you just end up writing whatever you fancy writing that day (laughs) yeah depends what mood you're in on the day (laughs) but it's nice to go in sometimes and have you know a clear idea of what you want to what you want to make and then everyone's on the same page Um, I think you've maybe answered this next question to be honest Lucy I was gonna say you've accomplished so much already what would be your dream role I would love to have a song picked up by one of my favorite artists literally anyone to be fair my I am so my brother is a singer my brother's an artist and so it's all about the music isn't it in your family it's like you've got it's like you've got creativity running through your veins (laughs) I know I'm very lucky to be surrounded by it and I started to write this song probably last year I just had this idea and I just knew I wanted him to sing it And so I took a first verse and a chorus to him and he really liked it. And we wrote the rest of it together. And that's going to be on his EP, which is just amazing to have co-written something literally with my brother. Um, Yeah. And that's coming out on the 18th of March. So (laughs) plugging for him. (laughs) Yeah, why not? I'll stick it in the in the show notes for you. Um, So what's coming next for you, Lucy? just writing lots of writing I've I don't know how much I can say but I've got a really cool backing vocal project coming up um I'm going to be doing BVs through the summer at lots of festivals for um an artist and that's really exciting because that's something I've never done before um and I'm dying to ask who it is but you're not allowed to say (laughs) I don't know if I'm allowed to say I don't know if it even matters but I'll tell you afterwards (laughs) (laughs) Um, just in case they've not announced kind of what shows and stuff they're doing. Yeah. Um, but no, so that's that's a really exciting opportunity. And that came through Steve Anderson, who I was telling you about earlier. And I just mm-hmm. feel so lucky that I found someone in a really crazy industry that really has my back and that looks wow. out for me as much as he does. So I've been very lucky to find him. But yeah, I think I just want to keep going in the direction that I'm going in. And it just makes me happy. And that, that's what I would love Aww. to just my life with that really that's what it's all about isn't it if you can find happiness it doesn't matter where you find it how you find it it's it's that's what life is all about absolutely completely so where can people find you I don't mean like give out your address I just mean like you can find me um, I have a couple of covers and stuff on Spotify if you want to hear singing and there's obviously stuff on YouTube so if you just type in Lucy Kane on any of the streaming sites kind of my um, covers will come up Um, my Instagram is Lucy underscore Kane and really that's the only platform I actually use I do have Twitter but I literally never use it but that's Lucy underscore underscore Kane if you're interested Um, but yeah Lucy underscore Kane on Instagram and I kind of post what I'm up to and bits and bobs mm-hmm. of stuff on there so 
fabulous everybody needs to go and check her out uh, so it's been absolutely wonderful to speak to you and i really appreciate you coming on it's been brilliant it has thank you so much for having me it's been a pleasure thank you for asking me on oh thank you for saying yes i really appreciate it and i shall speak to you soon okay thank you